Hi everybody, I'm Brett, this is one video on YouTube, and if you haven't already, please click the subscribe button down below, as new exciting video content is posted weekly on this channel. Now today we're looking at the Sony a7S III and the Panasonic Lumix S5, and you get the chance to guess which camera is which. We'll be performing an autofocus comparison test between these two cameras. So with all that out of the way, let's get started. So to begin, I've got the Sony a7S III and the Panasonic Lumix S5 currently recording. I've got the 50mm f1.4 on the Panasonic S5 and I've got the 85mm f1.8 on the Sony a7S III. Both have an f-stop of 2.8. I'm filming in the native ISO for both cameras, filming in S-Log3 on the Sony and filming in V-Log on the S5. Both these cameras are filming in full frame. I'm well aware that the Panasonic S series typically has much better autofocus results when filming in APS-C mode with a high shutter speed. However, for the nature of this test, I wanted an apples to apples comparison. Now for the Sony a7S III, the autofocus settings are at their maximum because I'm not looking for smooth cinematic results. I'm looking to see what is the most efficient, what is the quickest, what is the most responsive. For the Panasonic S5, I went with autofocus settings that made the most sense to me and all the different tests that I've done, these are the autofocus settings that make the most sense. Now it seems to be that both cameras are definitely light years better than a lot of the autofocus results we could get from other cameras years ago. And for Panasonic, of course, this is their best autofocus system yet for the S5. And also another thing I wanna mention is I do have both cameras with their most recent firmware updates just because there have been incremental improvements in the Panasonic S5 in terms of the autofocus. Now I'm gonna make this test a little bit more interesting and I will be doing a vlog test later on with it as well because I feel like with both these cameras they do appeal somewhat to a vlogging demographic being that they're both of comparable weights and being that they both have autofocus systems and people do tend to be using these cameras in a vlogging capacity. Now for a little bit of an autofocus test. This is a Yashica A camera. Here we go. By now, you hopefully can see the difference and you know which camera is which. And I guess if you can't see the difference, that's really a Feather and Panasonic's cap. But something tells me, if you haven't guessed it by now, you're not gonna guess it. Okay, the camera I'm looking at right now is the Sony a7S III. And here's the Panasonic S5. One thing I will say about this autofocus comparison is I feel so much more relieved when the Sony a7S III has my eye in a white box because I know I can trust that. Whenever the Panasonic, like right now, I've got this yellow amber colored box around my head, but I know that just because it's there does not mean that I'm in focus and that always bothers me. I was hoping these results would be as comparable as possible given that I do have, in my estimation, the very best lens right now on the Panasonic S5, which is the 50 millimeter F1.4. I took it out testing before and when I have this lens with a 4K 60p APS-C crop with the high shutter speed cranked up, I get really, really good autofocus results with the S5. The problem being is that once you have the APS-C crop, it sort of defeats the purpose of full frame, right? The Sony a7S III, of course, usually gets the most accolades for its autofocus system, but I'm curious to see about the S5. Now, there has been some background pulsing in the Sony a7S III. It's rare, but it is there. Now, I will be heading out onto the street 
and doing a vlog test with both cameras because I am curious to see you know, if you don't want to spend the kind of money required to get the Sony a7S III, does the Panasonic S5 have you covered? Because I think that's a really good consideration. I mean, the MSRP on the Panasonic S5 is two grand, and the MSRP on the a7S III is 3,500. Now, I will be switching the lenses off, of course, because it's a little bit hard to vlog with an 85 millimeter lens and with a 50 millimeter lens. But what I will be doing is using the 20 to 60 f3.5 to 5.6 on the S5, and I will be using the 20 millimeter f1.8 on the Sony. Now bear in mind, if you wanted to imitate the rigs I'm doing for a vlogging test, like say you were in the market for a vlogging camera that can do everything you need to do to be able to get good audio, have a nice picture, and have good autofocus. If you wanted to have those variables in a camera, you could theoretically film with the Panasonic S5. And with an MSRP of $2,300, which I believe is what it is, you get the S5 and you get the 20 to 60 f3.5 to 5.6. If you were to buy the camera and the lens separate, that would set you back about 2,600 because Panasonic dropped the price on the kit lens when you buy the kit vis-a-vis if you buy it separately, the lens is $600 MSRP. Now with the Sony, I believe the price for the a7S III and the 20 millimeter f1.8 is in the range of 4,300 MSRP. So 4,300 versus 2,300. It's $2,000 to work with there. And depending on your needs, it might make more sense to go with the a7S III or it might make more sense to go with the S5. There's a lot of things to consider. So when I head out onto the street, a couple of things I like to look for are, can the camera do good auto white balance? What I mean by good auto white balance is if I change circumstances, say at night, when you have street lamps and you have ambient light from restaurants or bars or whatever, your auto white balance needs to adapt to that in order to make it look not only consistent with where you are, but to not change too drastically, right? So you want great auto white balance if you're vlogging. Now, if you're vlogging in a studio environment where you know what the lighting settings are gonna be, then obviously auto white balance may not be that big of an issue for you because you can set it manually, like I did here. Moving on to IBIS, this is another thing to look out for when I head out to the street. And keep an eye on how the S5 and the a7S III compare when it comes to the IBIS because oftentimes I want to say the S5 has the leg up on IBIS just because the A7S III, Sony has attempted to at least meet Panasonic at where its IBIS is, but Panasonic did start out with better IBIS first and I think that Panasonic might actually outperform Sony in this category. So we've got auto white balance and IBIS the next thing I want to bring up, of course, is what we're doing now, which is the autofocus. And typically, Panasonic gets the most criticism for its autofocus system. However, with the S5 and the 20 to 60 f3.5 to 5.6, performing with this new firmware update, I find it to at least be pretty solid throughout and pretty sticky. Vis a vis the S1, which when it first came out and was released, the autofocus, you may as well just always have it in manual. So we're gonna look at auto white balance, IBIS, autofocus, and there's one last category to bring up and that's auto exposure. Now you would think auto exposure would be something you could sort of take for granted because all you're doing with the camera is it's just reading the background behind you and around you and exposing for the subject, which of course is yourself if you're vlogging. Now in my experience, both cameras perform well with auto exposure, but we'll do that vlogging test on the street momentarily and we can find out which camera is best at this. So let's head out onto the street and see how these cameras perform. Now it was supposed to be a clear day today. Unfortunately, uh, it is blizzard town where I am. So a clear day is not happening, but in a way this gives us more of a stress test for both these cameras and how they do in a vlogging environment. Now the Panasonic S5 does have an advantage with this lengthier tripod I'm using as you can see here. The reason I wanted to use a lengthier mini tripod on the S5 was because oftentimes with the 20 to 60 f3.5 to 5.6, 
even though technically both these lenses have a similar focal length, I do find that the 20 millimeter F 1.8 on the Sony's is a bit wider than the Panasonic's uh, 20 to 60 zoom lens. Now, while we're on Panasonic, how's that autofocus looking? I'm really checking for autofocus, auto white balance, IBIS, and auto exposure. So how do we like the Panasonic S5 right now? I've got that wonderful amber box around my head, but is it getting me? Is it telling me it's getting me, but it's actually not? Oh, lost me for a second. And we are on the Sony now, Sony a7S III, 20 mil f1.8. I've got active steady shot on. Auto white balance should be cooking. And the autofocus, it really doesn't get much better than that. When it's got that little white box right around your eye, you know it's got you. With the Panasonic, that amber box can be a, it can be a false comfort. So now I'm filming at night and I've got the auto ISO on along with auto exposure, auto focus, and I have once again active steady shot for the Sony a7S III. With the Panasonic S5, I have all those settings active as well. Of course, Panasonic might struggle a little bit more with the low light. I'm walking at a pretty slow pace, as you can see, but it does feel like it's a little bit jerky on the a7S III. With the Panasonic S5, I think IBIS is a bit smoother. What do you think? I wanted to test out the auto white balance with changing ambient light. As you can see here, there's a bit of amber light behind me, and this is on the Sony a7S III. Now with the Panasonic S5, this amber light is really not coming in the same as it was with the a7S III. I see the auto exposure hitting 16,000 on the S5. Getting a little bit better here. So between these two cameras, which camera do you think is operating best right now? And which camera do you think has the best autofocus? IBIS, auto exposure, and auto white balance. So that concludes the vlogging test on the street. For me and my uses, it probably comes as no surprise that I prefer the Sony a7S III when it comes to autofocus situations. Like right now, I'm using this camera for the majority of the time because I trust it. Now for the IBIS, I do find the Sony a7S III to have inferior IBIS when compared to the Panasonic S5. The active IBIS also does a crop, which can make it a little bit more difficult to do vlogging tests and to do vlogging in general. Now, with that being said, Catalyst Browse on the a7S III has a lot going for it and it might be better. But when it comes to quick turnaround and camera stabilization, I do find the Panasonic S5 to have better stabilization. For the auto white balance, I can't find any meaningful differences between the two cameras. I think color science comes into play though with both these cameras and I do find the Panasonic S5 to have better color science than the Sony a7S III. Now I know the Sony Alpha 1 is coming out and that's got the new Cinetone picture profile and I'm curious to see more about that but for me I can't ever seem to find like a really nice all around right out of the box picture profile like I can with the Panasonic S5. And finally auto exposure. Between the two cameras, I have seen more consistent results with the Panasonic S5. With the Sony a7S III, there are times where it doesn't seem to want to expose for my face, and it has, in some instances, uh, focused on the background more, thus leaving my face dark and the background illuminated. So that wraps up the video. I feel like we've covered all the bases I wanted to get out of the way. Auto white balance, auto focus, auto exposure, IBIS, all four of those things are very important if you're going to be doing a vlog. So I'm curious to hear what you all think and hopefully you found this video helpful or engaging. And if you did, please give a big thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, comment below, let me know what you think and I'll see you in the next one.